I'll just adjust this. Got it. Okay. And we welcome along William. Hello, William in Bendigo. And we welcome along Norma. Hello, Norma. Good to see you this morning. And for those who are here, uh, we've got Sylvia and Robin, Wayne and Catherine. And who's just walked in? Who is it? Margaret and Cornelius. Margaret and Cornelius. Hello. And we've got a newcomer. What was your name? Pippa. Pippa. Hello. Yeah. That's not Pippa, is it? <laughs> well, you'll be able to see them on the screen very shortly. Come in and don't get bowled over in the rush. So I'll sit down. So, <clears throat> gee, it's good to see you after all these. How long has it been? Yes. Oh, right, okay. Mm, yes, yes. All right, well, look, for the people on Zoom that don't know what's going on, we'll turn it around later so you can see who's here. And isn't it interesting, the topic today is along the way, and here you are back. And the people we meet along the way. Uh, a book I used to read uh, by Gurdjieff called Meetings with Remarkable Men. How many people have we met in our lives that we've just contacted with for a brief time and then they've gone their way? One in particular, a chap called, with the, just a normal name, Harry Radford. When I was at school, he could see I had potential as an athlete. You wouldn't think so now, but uh, those were the days. And he used to say to my father, I want him round the football ground every night. I was already in the surf club, then I thought, oh, can I do this? Well, of course you can when you're about 12 or 13, even though you mumble and grumble. So I used to go around the oval, jog around about 10 times. He said, now a few more times, and there was a group of us, and he got us all together. And he produced four Tasmanian schoolboy champions from, from me. And then, you know, after I finished high school, uh, something happened, we never saw him again. And he was around, but circumstances had changed. And I'd like to think he met other people that he could have helped on the way. And there's a few people here I can see that have helped me on the way, and one or two on Zoom, and Sylvia in particular. Try and escape Sylvia, you've got to, you've got to be good. <laughs> I remember playing the piano at Forest Hill Chase, and this lady comes up. She'd been coming in for a while, hadn't you, Sylvia? It's been quite a while, and I play all this quiet cocktail-type music, so people want to eat more and think they're in the good life. and. Anyway, she came up to me afterwards and said, oh, oh, would you come along and play at my church? I thought, oh, I'm over that stuff. Anyway, I put her off and put her off, but Sylvia had this corporate manner about her when she wants to, and she wasn't going to give up. So she started talking about the church, and I thought it was one of those old blue stones where they'd be singing ancient hymns, and the organ would be creaking. And she said, mentioned Catherine Ponder. Well, I lit up. Catherine, I'd been getting her books from the Theosophical Society for quite a few years. And the first Unity book I did read was Catherine Ponder, I think something about prayer. She had a certain way of writing her books, The Power of Prayer or something like that. And gradually I got more and more. The TS didn't have many formal books at the time. And the reason I'm looking at you is because you know all about that place. I'm talking here about the Theosophical Society. Anyway, that's been a wonderful uh, place for us. Anyway, Sylvia, this was about 20 years ago. I was probably the same age Stuart is now. And so I came along and played, and sure enough, I followed the path, and here I am. So look out if you're a piano player or a musician. You could get uh, meet someone along the way that brings you to another path you didn't think you'd be going. And there are other ones. And there are situations where we find ourselves along the way where we have to rest. Sometimes we, we get comfortable in a path and all of a sudden there are two paths. And you think, oh, I just want to stay where I am. But we can't. 
that soul urge will not give up on us. It will say, it'll make things happen. We won't have anything to do with it. Our higher self knows what it wants for us. But we can get happy, we have the heating on at home, watch film, and just think, oh, this is great, I want this to stay forever. But it doesn't. Something happens where we're interrupted with our routine, so we have to make a choice. Which one is the right choice? Well, the only way we're going to find out is to take it. And that's where having a knowledge of the 12 powers, the wisdom, the energy, and the zest and vigour to take this journey can help us. It may be the wrong turn, but even that is still the right turn. And there are some that aren't here today who aren't well. And they have to now rest. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down to lie. So if you've been running around and it's not good for body and soul, well, you will have to sit down and something will happen where you're made to sit down and take a rest. The power of zeal, you know, can get us going. We can be overzealous, there's another one of those powers, and that's a very, very good power when we use it properly, combined with wisdom. So we may not take the right turn all the time, but somewhere along the way, we find ourselves back on the path. And I just think, well, Jesus said, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest for a while. We live in this dual world, hot and cold, ups and downs, happy, sad, and we teach in unity that we are the result of our thinking. Well, that is so, but we're in the middle of everyone else's thought, and what a mess it can be. Look at us now, my goodness. And so the power we can use now is the power not to be sucked in to the negative side of things. We use that power to uplift our souls and uplift those around us. And we know where two or more are gathered together in my name, there I am, as we said in the meditation this morning. So from my perspective of being here into, into unity, new thought and divine science and everything else that came along at the time, one journey after another, I'm going to introduce you to someone that's in the position I was in and the same age I was when I came here. Would you welcome Stuart to the platform? Thank you so much, Reverend Bill, that was beautiful. Well, Bill invited me to speak on, uh, on the way, and the first thing I remembered was uh, the Christian movement was called the way, at the very start. So just for attribution, I'll mention that I'm about to read something from a website called gotquestions.org under the topic, What is the Way in the Bible? The way is mentioned several times in the book of Acts in connection with early followers of Christ. During his trial before Felix, Apostle Peter said, I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. Presumably, the early followers of Christ referred to themselves as followers of the way because Jesus stated in John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, I have some quotes now. So this quote is from Rosemary Fillmore Rhea, who is the granddaughter of the founders of Unity, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, and this, this ties in beautifully with what Bill was talking about. The world we are experiencing today is the result of our collective consciousness. And if we want a new world, each of us must start taking responsibility for helping create it. So we're collectively on this path, on this journey together. I'll read it one more time. The world we are experiencing today is the result of our collective consciousness. And if we want a new world, each of us must start taking responsibility for helping create it. I've got a second quote from the same lady. The years have taught me that we are on a journey, and if we trust God's travel plan, it will lead us safely through all the twists and turns. 
that are a part of the human experience. I'll read that one more time too. So this is what she's learned on her journey on the way. The years have taught me that we are on a journey, and if we trust God's travel plan, it will lead us safely through all the twists and turns that are a part of the human experience. Now, of course, being a singer, when Reverend Bill mentioned uh, along the way, there's a song with that, that title by Nat King Cole. I thought I'd sing that to you. Um, when I checked the lyrics, I was surprised by how appropriate they are, so I put them up there for you to, to read along. in mysterious ways because I went to a funeral um, yesterday, uh, no, Thursday. The last song was Nat King Cole singing Pick Yourself Up. And um, you wonder why, you know, at a funeral don't say Pick Yourself Up. But the, this was a theatrical bunch of people and they used to run a dancing school and the lady's best friend came on and said, you're all wearing black. Jean wouldn't have been happy about that. And so I went on in that, that era. And as they're all working out, walking out the door, Nat King Cole singing, pick yourself up, and you almost half expected it to materialise in the room. It was a great, great one. And also, uh, Catherine, um, we wish you well. We know you had your mum's funeral the other day, and uh, it's on, online. And we know you're going through a time too at the moment, so our thoughts have been with you all week. Well, there's not much more I can say on the way. Does anyone want to say anything about the way? Has any particular part of the way been 
a journey voyage? No, you're all trying not to look at me. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's that's enough, don't you, for that? And it's a it's all this came from a talk I did called a movement and a rest. And I think when we're young, we don't worry about that too much. But as we get older, we have to rest. Otherwise, there'll be no movement. Okay, it's time now for uh, we've got another song, Stuart. This is an old one. It's got a backing track. 